Good evening, everyone. Let's welcome our host for tonight, Miss Kay Angelo and Mr. Ian Perez. Palakbaka naman dyan! Good evening, singles! Good evening, singles! And welcome back to... Our Big Fridays! Hi, I am your host, Kay. And I'm Ian Perez, and we are your hosts for our new series, Truth Speaks. And for tonight's session, partner, ano bang title ng topic natin today? The Truth About, about God. God. Wow! Excited ba kayo, guys? Nako, parang hindi. Parang kulang yung energy nyo. Paramdam naman. Pwede bang kung excited kayo, shout out naman dyan. Yes, and also kay no, uh, Jean, invite din natin yung mga team online. No? Guys, kung excited yes. kayo, kindly chat on our comment section and let's make some noise. Yes, of course. Or ano, pindutin nyo yung inyong mga favorite na emojis, di ba? Connect ka dyan, Sa partner. Social no? media. So, guys, kamusta kayo? Why don't you also make kamusta? Kanya, eh, no? Kanya. Ay. <laughs> Why don't make you make kamusta to the people around you? Tanong nyo, kamusta sila? Namiss nyo ba ang Big Fridays? Kay, namiss mo, Jean, namiss mo ba Big Fridays? Of course. Siyempre, namiss natin. Iba yung energy dito, eh. Correct, no? Kaya let's say, make some noise para kay Lord, guys, no? So, all of you guys are all welcome here dito sa Big Friday. Ayan, naririnig na natin, nagpapalakpakan at tumataas na yung energy natin tonight. Correct. And of course, yung ating mga online na participants, we would like to um, invite you and pati yung mga nandito sa on-site to please uh, like, share, and comment. Tag your friends and family sa ating live broadcast. That is so correct, partner. No, grabe talaga yung energy tuwing Big Fridays. No, talagang pil na pil mo yung presence ni Lord. Of course. Kaya guys, thank you for joining us tonight. Sa ating team online, team onsite, we would like to appreciate you guys for joining us. Again, don't forget, sabi nga ni Jin kanina, no, to subscribe to our social media accounts for more updates. Like nyo na, share nyo na, etag sinyo ni mga kaibigan nyo, friends nyo, and for those. Na first timer natin, no mga first time natin na mga kamasama sa online, no. Oo. Ah, we will be flashing the first timer sin link for you later on. Yes. Also, pag share nyo ng ating live broadcast, don't forget to use our hashtag dito sa Big Fridays, which is hashtag Big Truth Speaks and hashtag Big Fridays. That is so correct, partner. Are you blessed na kasama natin sila tonight? Of course, I'm blessed na kasama kita and blessed ako na kasama natin yung mga participants natin tonight. Kate, blessed ka ba tonight na nakasama mo kami, Kate? Kayo ba, guys? <laughs> blessed ba kayo na kami ang host nyo ngayong gabi? Ayun. Wow, Ayun I naman. love it. And Ayun. blessed din ba kayo na nakikita nyo kung sino yung nasa left and right at mga katabi nyo dyan? Okay, kung talagang blessed kayo, pwede bang sabihin nyo sa katabi nyo na we are blessed to have you tonight. We are blessed to have you tonight, Roan. Wow. We are blessed to have you tonight, Joseph. Nakakakilig, di ba, partner? Pumipiyok, nagbibinata. Oo. Nakaka-excite. Ayan, sobrang nga talaga nakaka-bless ng presence ng bawat isa. Kaya sa mga first timers, guys, we encourage you to join us every Friday. Of course. We invite you to come on site, no, dito sa MPH. If hindi naman, dahil nasa office ba kayo, nag-overtime kayo, you can always go to our online. Kaya, join kayo dito sa big natin, no? Which big, which means... Oo, partner. Sino ba tayo? Sino ba ang big? Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng big? Thank you for that wonderful question, partner. So, big stands for be one with God, no? So, itong ministry na to, is isang opportunity para pakilala pa natin si Lord, no? through sa mga messages na magagaling sa ating mga speakers. Yes! And other than that, this is also an opportunity for each and every one of us to meet our fellow singles. Yan! And syempre, make some new friends. Especially through our breakout sessions, after the message, and of course, other activities that we have tonight. That is so perfect, partner, because... At syempre also, no, by the way guys, so we want everyone safety. Kaya as per our uh, COVID protocol and 
precautionary measures. So, may nabubulol ako, partner. Everyone must wear mask at all time and sanitize frequently. Ayan. Yes. Si... Kami lang po ang allowed na walang mask. Yeah, Naka-social distancing naman tayo. Kaya malayo Ayan. tayo sa isa't isa. Para makita nila yung cheerful face natin. Para makita nila na happy-happy tayo yes, na makita Yes, at excited talaga tayo na makasama sila. And, partner, gusto natin i-share ano ba yung topic natin ngayong gabi talaga? Of course, Kay. Alam nyo, maganda ang topic Ulitin natin, natin for topic. everyone. And I believe, saktong sakto din to for everyone tonight, no? Dahil ang first topic natin for this series is called, about, is called Truth About God. So personally, I think this is a perfect timing for all of us to study this because middle of the year na and a lot of things are happen, had, had happened. Yes, lalo na nasa kalagitnaan na tayo Correct. ng taon, di ba? Baka some of us or many of us is experiencing that. Yung alam mo yung kailangan ng onting push baga dahil ano oh ganyan tama yung demo mo di ba so we need that little push to go back into being disciplined and spend more time with the Lord and learn about His words Correct, and of no? course keeping in mind His purpose for our lives. That is so correct, no? Kaya guys, makipush na yung mga kasama nyo, baka natutulog na sila. Ay, hindi, joke lang yun. Push joke lang, na. push lang. Encourage lang sila. Huwag nyo masyadong sila. lakas, baka malaglag. <laughs> Kidding aside, partner, I know, you know what, I agree with everything that have you said, no? So, pero huh? bago natin simulan yung message natin for tonight, meron muna tayong gagawin na activity, no? Na sobrang exciting, no? Para sa mga kasama yes, natin partner. dito sa online and on-site. Ano nga ba tong activity natin for tonight, guys? Patingin naman ang inyong mga cellphones. Meron ba kayo mga data or wifi? Oh, meron daw. So nakaka-excite yung ating activity for tonight dahil meron tayong mga generous sponsors. Yes, of course, our on-site and online kasali for this activity tonight. Yes, partner, no? And gusto mo bang malaman kung ano yung title ng activity natin ano for tonight? Ano activity natin tonight, partner? Guys, ang tawag sa activity natin for tonight is this, no? <laughs> ang hirap niya bigisin, eh. Kanina. Quiz is it, okay? Quiz is it. Guys, makisigaw nga ulit. Quiz is it. Oh, yan. Yeah. It's quiz is it. So, so ma-exercise ma ang ating mga brain cells because we have prepared 10 fan questions for you to answer. And whoever got the fastest and highest score will win the prize for tonight. So and par paano mag-register, yep. partner? So, partner, no, na-mention mo, no, this, is, this game is for both online and on-site, no? So, guys, kindly go to www.quizzes.com, um, okay? And then, in enter yung code na to. And then, after that, upon registration, guys, we would like you guys to indicate na kung team online kayo or team on-site kayo, no? If you are joining game the game online, no, kindly type OL space yung pangalan nyo. Or if you are joining on-site, kayong mga on-site guys, no, kindly type OS space and then yung pangalan nyo. So example, ako nasa on-site yes. ako, partner, no? OS space, space? Ian Pogi. Then, yeah. joke lang. Ian lang, Ian lang, Ian lang, okay? Make sure, guys, that you use your complete name para ma-identify namin kayo yeah. para sa ating prizes. Huwag muna today. tayo magtago kasi sayang yung prizes, no? Pag-anas. Oye, partner, speaking of prizes, no? Ano ba yung prizes natin, no? Sa mga participants natin? Meron tayong tatlong prizes. Kung sino ang pinaka-grand winner natin will win a study Bible. And for our one on-site and one online winner will receive a voucher galing sa ating mga sponsors. Grabe, magkakaroon ka na ng study Bible? Yes! Wow! Kaya, partner, simula na natin to. Alright. Uh, guys, nakapasok na ba kayo dun sa game natin? Nakapasok na kayo? Wait, we're, we're just... We, ano? Punta lang kayo sa www.quizzes.com Ano bang spell ng squeezes? Yes. Asa na ba? So, meron tayong pin-repair na tatlong question dyan. Ay, sampung question. question. Partner sakto, no? Nadadagdagan yung mga participants natin, no? Yes, ayan. Yan, sila OLMer, yeah. si Don't Jean. Don't forget, ayan, yung iba walang OL or OS na nakalagay. Yeah, so, hindi guys, natin don't forget, alam. no? We would like to find out kung on-site kayo or OL kayo or online kayo. Kasi, by the way, ulitin ko lang, no? Yung grand prize na, na natin, yung study Bible, is for both online and on-site, Okay. And then the other two prizes will be given to one online and then one on-site. Kaya we would like to identify guys, no, if you are playing 
online or on site. Yes. So, Hello. bali tatlo ang prizes natin for Correct. this game. So, guys, kung nakapasok na kayo, unahan ito and whoever get the fastest yeah. na matapos dun sa sampung question and whoever got the highest score will win our prizes. So, top three ito. Correct. So, partner, tanongin natin, team on site, ready na ba kayo? And yeah. our team online, shout out naman kayo dyan. And uh, pusuan or mag-like kayo ng inyong yeah. mga emojis dyan para Emoji. ma-feel namin ang inyong Emoji. mga presence online. So partners, simulan na natin. First question. Yes. What is the title of our new series? Nako partner, kakasabi ko lang yung kanina. Mahirap, nakailang Mahirap. tayo? Nakailang tayong sabi para sa kanila guys. What's the title of our new series? Truth Remains Ba? Truth Sagot Speaks? Na? Truth in Love? Or truth will set you free. Okay. And for, ayan na, lumalabas na sa ating leaderboard kung sino ang nauuna. Ayan. So, the right answer, ang tamang answer is truth speaks, partner. Yes. Okay, next question, please. Where do on-site Peak Pride is usually held? Ay, saan nga ba yan? Saan nga ba talaga yun? Ang jirap naman ng tanong. Ang jirap naman. Ang jirap-jirap naman. So, ayan. So, time's up. Next question. A leaderboard, tignan mo natin, partner. A leaderboard mo. Ang totoong, ang totoong, ang tamang answer is multi-purpose source hall. Ayan. Ito naman, next question. Ito. Blank is a small group that meets regularly to share about each other's lives, study the Bible together, and be accountable to one another in your pursuit. So, sino pa rin ang leading? Si Elena, nagbago na. So, ang tamang sagot, partner, is discipleship group. Yes, yeah. ayan, ang daming tama ang sagot. Next question. So, ayan na, guys, di pagkakataon pa kayo mabal, Kate, kumabal ka, kaya mo yan. Kaya nyo yan. Wait What is the ako. real name of Big Ministry Lead Pastor? Nako, dapat Uy, kilala nyo to. Ang hirap Nako. naman ito. Pag hindi nyo to kilala. Discipler ko to, dapat alam ko to. <laughs> Yung mga magigilty. Okay. O, oh, nagpapalak pa ka na. The right answer is... What is the right answer? May nagsisigawa na dyan. Enrico De Leon. <laughs> Ang dami talaga ni Ikoy. Yung Ikoy, palayo ni Pastor palayo. Ikoy yun. Pero Enrico Next De Leon talaga siya. Okay. Pang limang question na to, partner na. No? Tama na. No? Oo, ata partner. <laughs> okay. Okay, blank cluster are the ones in charge to engage a small group in big. Anong cluster Sino to? Sino ba ito? Anong cluster Anong to? Anong tawag sa kanila? Music team ba ito, partner? Ayan, may bumapalak pa. Did you get it right? Did you get it right? Oo. May leading tayo. So, ang tamang answer partner is Facilitator. Facilitator is master. Okay. Next question na tayo, guys. Okay. According to the Bible scholar, what is the oldest book in the Bible? Ayan, ganang tanong yan. Nako. Ito, medyo ma-exercise ang kanilang mga brain cells. Talagang ma-activate yung brain cells mo dito, partner. Knowledge nila about the Bible. May nagsisigawa na. Exciting to. Partner, tignan mo yung leading natin si Aline. Followed by Abby. Kayo dyan, guys. Yung mga nasa likod na table, kamusta naman kayo? Nakakasagot ba? So, ang right answer, kapatid, is Book of Genesis. Oy, Genesis. Parang ang hirap niyan. Yeah. Yeah. Next so, question. So, sige. O, kamusta naman kayo, guys? Nahahasabain yung mga knowledge about the Bible and knowledge about big. Okay, how many days did God take to create the world? Partner, ilang days ba? Naku, parang ang hirap Ako. nito. <laughs> parang, hindi ko alam yung sagot nito. Alam mo, partner, kailangan yata natin mag-interview kung alam Correct. nila. <laughs> Mukha nga eh. Teka nga ako, bababa, ba, partner. Sige, sige, gusto partner, kong palaman mo. kung anong mga sagot dito. Pero gusto ko sa medyo gitna tayo pupunta. Ay, Ayan parang na. nahihiya sila para ayaw nila nasagutin yung ano, tanong. O, dito tayo, anong pangalan mo? Lester. Lester, ano ang sagot mo sa ating tanong? Go, Lester, kaya mo yan. How many days daw did God take to create the world? Six. Oh, six daw. How about sa ibang table? Ay, dito tayo. Table number 80. Anong sagot nyo? What's your name? Jai. Jai, anong sagot mo? Six po. Six? Parang pareho. May nagaganap yata kopyahan ngayong gabi. 
Next yata, partner eh. Oh, sige, ano nga, partner? Ano ba ang sagot sa tanong natin? Sige nga. Ang tamang sagot, guys, ay six days. Ay, andyan na pala, yeah. partner. Nagkala pa Siguro yung ako. seven days na sumagot, akala nila isang linggong pag-ibig. <laughs> Oo. Oh, Baka yun yung sagot nila eh. Oo. Oh, Pero creation of the world, di tinatanong okay, pala natin. Okay, okay, okay. So, next question. Let's do this. Okay. Name the person who received the Ten Commandments from God. Naku, sino nakatanggap niya? Ah, sino ba yan? Sino nakatanggap niyan? Okay. Kate, kala mo sino? <laughs> okay, time's okay. up. Sino kaya? Ano kaya ang tamang sagot? Tignan mo natin, Dieter Bird Partner. Si Aline pa rin na nangunguna, followed by Abby and then si Aceline, no? Isang online, dalpang on-site. Oop! Ang correct okay. answer is Ay, Moses. Si Moses. Partner, hawakan mo nga yung ating price. Ipapakita natin yan sa kanila. Next question, please. Ayan. Kayo pa humabol, guys. Team kaya online, pa, kaya pa. laban pa. What garden did Jesus go to when He prayed after the Last Supper? So, ano ang sagot? Partner Clue. Wala sa Pilipinas niyan. <laughs> Wala sa Pilipinas niyan. <laughs> Nasa Luzon ba? O, oh, oh, time's up na. na, 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 na What's the answer? Sino ang nangunguna ang lakas ni O.L. Ali? Oh, nga, ano ba to? Eileen. So, ang correct answer, partner, is Garden, Garden. of Gethsemane. Yes. Next question, please. Ayan. So, ayan, hawak na namin ang ating... So, last question na pala to, partner. Oh, last na pala. Okay. Who claimed he didn't know Jesus three times? No? Ay, three sino times. kaya to? Sinisigaw na nila kung sino ang tamang sagot? Si Rowell daw. Joke lang. Joke lang, brother. Joke lang, brother. Joke lang, brother. Joke lang. Okay, time's up. At syempre, hawak namin ngayon ang ating prizes for tonight. Our study Bible sana. Nung nakasali ako, no? So, okay. correct answer is Peter. Peter. Okay, so, si Peter. sino kaya ang ating winner? Grand winner for the game. Magkakaalaman yan later. Kaya, okay na? So, I think that's it for tonight. Ito, partner pa rin top natin, no? Ay, ito na pala. Pinapakita ang ating first. Ayan, so first honor Ay, natin si Alina. Kilala Ali. nila kung sino yon partner. So, ayan. Ayan. So, partner, no, that was a fun brain exercise, no? Grabe, I may konting challenge, sila. no? Oh, ang mga oh. tanong, pero nag-enjoy siya na pressure. Sure. Nag-enjoy ba kayo, guys? Yes naman. And syempre, um, we would like to invite everyone no, to have their ano, discipleship group then after our ano, after our breakout. So hindi na natin patatagalin to. We won't keep you waiting because this next part of our program is one of the highlights. Correct. So let's have our worship team to lead us and let's feel the presence of the Lord as we All sing right. tonight. Alright. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Good evening, Big Fridays. As we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord our God, I wanted to read to you guys scripture from 1 Chronicles 29, where David declares praise and blessing to our God. It reads, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. So as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord our God, let us worship Him and remember Him in all of His greatness. Because in spite of all the uncertainties that we are facing, we know that He is the truth that remains. That He is the one true King that reigns over everything. And that He is the constant whose greatness we can always proclaim. So as we prepare to worship our God, I invite you all to stand up. And let us sing our hearts out to our God who is good and great and is worthy of our praise. Just as you are, lift up your hearts and your voices to God. The splendor of the King, clothed in 
majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. It is our prayer that we would be able to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep 
is the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge, that we may be filled with the fullness of God. Let's meditate on this song. Praise you, God, in this place, Father. In a society where everyone has the freedom to speak. In a society where everyone has the freedom to speak their version of the truth, where anyone can twist and bend the truth. Are you ready to accept the truth? Are you ready to stand up for it? Will you still love others even if they are opposed to the truth? Will you help them understand the truth? Choose to speak the truth in love. With a passion for communicating timeless truths in timeless ways to different audiences, 
Mike Yap has spoken in a variety of events and forums, both in the marketplace as well as church circles. He is a full-time servant at Christ Commission Fellowship, serving in the men's ministry called Movement, which stands for Moving Men to Christ, Intercede Prayer Ministry, and Leadership Development Initiatives for the Church. He is currently happily married to Ibet, expecting their first baby soon. And together, they serve the Lord through their marriage, discipling, mentoring, counseling, and pointing people to the gospel, all for the glory of Jesus. Guys, let's all welcome Brother Mike Yap. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Kakaiba to, you know? I think I gained 10 pounds with this uh, LED monitor. So, how are you guys tonight? How's the sound? Okay lang ba? All right. So, good evening, everyone. All right. Uh, we're going to have to do better than that. Good evening, singles of Big Fridays. All right. Thank you for being so energetic. You're going to need it a lot for tonight, okay? We are going to be starting a new series here at Big Fridays, and it is called Truth Speaks. Everyone say that. Truth Speaks. Okay? We're going to be talking about some solid truths today, and first, we're going to be talking about the truth about God. Okay? Now, why is this so important? Why do we have to know what we believe and why, you know, what are the evidences for what we believe, okay? That's the heart of apologetics. That's what we're going to be tackling tonight. And as I start, I want to show you a few pictures, okay? If you can see this behind me, have you seen this on social media? This comes from the James Webb Space Telescope that NASA released a few days ago. And the, in these photos, we see not Thor, Love and Thunder, no? <laughs> Okay, these are the latest photographs that we see of the entire known universe. Isn't it amazing? Have you ever just walked on the night sky? Diba, pagkatapos ng Big Fridays, maglakad ka lang dyan sa labas, tapos tingin ka lang dun sa taas, parang, wow, napakaganda naman ng universe. Sana may kasama ako, tumitingin sa taas, no? Lord, please lang, kung kagandahan ng universe, sana may kasama rin akong maganda o guwapo, di ba? Right? When we look at the universe, we see several pictures. This is, an, this is a photo of a, uh, I think, a supernova blast. And these are light years away from where we are at here in CCF Center. And furthermore, just, you know, the, the vastness of this photo shows us that we are just one speck of a minuscule part of this entire known universe. I don't know about you, but when I see pictures like these, namamangha ako. There is something about the universe that makes me so feel so small and so insignificant. But at the same time, when I look at these pictures, I see truths about God. I see that there is something, someone, behind all of this creation. Tama po ba? Do we, do we feel that or do we believe that? When we look at the creation all around us, we see at least the traces of God and His design. Now for today, in our first session, I have primarily two questions, two parts in this message that I have. The first question is, what is what? Truth. What is truth? Ano yung katotohanan? What do we believe about truth? Because truth be told, if you look on your social media feeds today, there are many quote-unquote truths. The second part of our message for today is after uncovering what truth is, okay, we'll be talking about who is God. Everyone read that with me. Who is, who is God? More importantly, we're going to tackle about the evidences that there is a God who exists and why does it matter to us? Diba? Who is God? But more specifically, who is God to you? Diba? You can say that, yeah, there is a God out there, but who is He to you? Okay? So this will form the message today as we start our series on Truth Speaks. Now, the first part of our message is, what is truth? Have you ever asked yourself, how can we find out if there is truth in the world today, right? 
maybe you've heard some of these statements. Many people today will say, well, just have faith. Diba? Tiwala lang. Tama ba? Just have faith. Well, to that we ask, what kind of faith? And where do we place our faith in? You might hear this line that all beliefs naman lead to God. Eh. So it doesn't really matter what your religion is. All of those will eventually lead you towards a higher power or a divine being. Maybe you've heard your friends say, well, live by your own truth. I have my truth, you have yours. You go ahead and do whatever you want, right? How many of you have heard of this? God will save all of us. Right? Doesn't matter what you do, He understands. Everyone will be saved at the end of the day. Or you might have found yourself saying this, there's no such thing as God. Live life your own way. Right? Especially in the midst of the pandemic, many people were like, well, if, if a pandemic happened, you know, I just want to, might as well live my life the way I want it to go. And maybe you've heard yourself say, just as long as I do my best, or if I don't hurt anyone, I'll be okay. Particularly for church folk, you might be saying this, I belong to a church or a religion, therefore I'm safe, right? I'm part of CCF, I go to a D group, right? I attend Big Fridays religiously, so I'm okay, I think. Or some of you might have grown up in a Christian family and you're saying, well, I'm safe because I grew up in a Christian home. Or traditionally, our, our family follows Christianity. Whatever you've heard, this is what the scriptures tell us in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 2. Let's all read this together. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, explicitly says that in later times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Verse 2. By means of the hypocrisy of liars, seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron. What is this verse trying to tell us? It is God the Holy Spirit speaking, and he says, in the later times, this is the last days, okay? And by the way, the last days are right now, okay? In our current generation, after Christ resurrected and rose up, that day, until our day today, this is the last days. And the Spirit explicitly says that in those days, in our days, there will be deceitful spirits. There will be doctrines of demons, all kinds of beliefs and lies being pervaded by people who have their consciences seared. Okay? Ibig sabihin, they don't listen to a sense of right and wrong in their heart. It's seared as if parang may kalos. Okay? And then they propagate all of these lies. And that's why the Apostle Peter says this, and this is our main verse for tonight. Okay? And let's all read this together. We find it in 1 Peter 3.15. Let's all read it. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account. Let's all read this together. For the hope that is in you, but with gentleness and respect okay now this is our key verse for at least for our message for today and for this series that we need to what sanctify christ as lord in our hearts this has to be folks a reality diba? Nasa puso po natin, nasa buhay po natin, that we set apart we cherish we sanctify christ as lord why is that so important because many people today will say, well, just believe in this, believe in that. But if you do not set apart Christ as Lord in your heart, you will fall for anything. If you don't stand on Christ and His truth, you will fall for all of the lies. Friends, and there are many. Just ch check your social media feed. You'll see all sorts of fake news and false narratives. So if you do not sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, you might miss out on the chance to give a defense okay? for the reason why you believe what you believe, for the reason that you have faith. So as we begin this time, why don't we sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts together in prayer. Is that okay? Okay lang kayo guys? Okay, let's pray guys. Let's join our hearts and bow our heads. Father, we thank you today that we can gather here at Big Fridays to talk about 
this most crucial, most necessary, and vital part of our faith. And it is to sanctify you as Lord in our hearts and to give a defense to anyone who asks us the reason for our faith, the reason for our hope. It is our prayer, Lord, that you would equip us through this session tonight, that you will lead us by your word and by other means to see the evidence that you exist, that there is objective, absolute truth, so that we don't fall for the lies of our generation, for the false narratives and news, so that we will stand by your truth and by your truth alone. And I pray for everyone here that has joined us tonight. I pray that this would be a reality in our lives, even for those who are watching us online, that the truth about God would so permeate our lives, O oh Lord, that we would live it out, that it would emanate from our hearts and our minds. Thank you, Lord, in advance for what you will do here today. And we commit this time to you. Please override my preparations. Fill me with your spirit so that I would speak your words unto your people. And we commit this time to you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen and amen. So guys, as we start our session here, we are learning how to create our defense. Everyone say defense. Okay? We have to have a defense for anyone, everyone who asks us for the reason or for the hope that we have. But look at this. We must do it with what? Gentleness and respect. Let us not be like those social media keyboard warriors who are all at it on all the time, right? Texting and chatting and then parang, parang bang when you read something in text, sobrang bastos, di ba? But for us Christians, when we give a defense, we, get, we do so with gentleness and with respect. 2 Timothy 2 verse 25 says that we need to be skillful, be kind to all people, Patient when wrong. And with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition. Yeah? That's what he says, how we are to go about our defense. Most of us, when we think of a defense, parang, oh, uh, uh, diba? violente. But for us, we are to do it with gentleness, respect, patience, and we exhort in sound doctrine to refute those who contradict it. Sabi sa Titus verse, chapter 1, verse 9. Okay? The key word here is defense. And this is where we get the word apologia, apologetics. Okay? And apologetics is uh, in itself a plea or an apology. It is an account okay, for what you believe in. It is a, uh, it's as if you're clearing something up. Okay? And that's where we get this whole broad idea of Christian apologetics. It is the discipline of knowing and defending biblical theological doctrines of the Christian faith. Okay? Now, okay, okay pa kayo? Now, why is this so important? First of all, apologetics will make you earnest and humble. Okay? In my own, uh, you know, journey in apologetics, I've been learning this for the past three to four years now. You know, I, I started off, you know, wanting all of the answers. And then the more questions that I asked, the more God humbled me. Yeah? Kaya nga apologetic eh. <laughs> Medyo nag-sorry ka parate, but that's beside the point. But it just humbles you to the point that, wow, there's so much to learn. Okay? Now ask yourself, are you willing to learn? Tingnan niyo po yung katabi niyo. Mukha bang willing to learn? Mukha bang kailangan niyang mag-apologize? So I'm telling you today, I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional apologist, although my wife knows that I apologize all the time to her, but this is a lifelong discipline. You know, once we start here in Big Fridays, you're going to be open to many curious things. You're going to ask questions that you've never asked before. So that's why this realm of apologetics for Christians will actually help you on that journey. I'm not saying that you will get all of the answers in this session alone. It's that, that we are starting this journey of knowing God more. Okay? Now, the first book that I want to refer to you okay, is John, Josh and Sean McDowell's Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Okay? In this book, and I quote, he says, Apologetics is not listed 
as a spiritual gift for teachers, preachers, or evangelists. As though only some ought to become apologists. Guys, hindi lang to para sa akin, para kay Pastor Ikoy, o kung sino man magturo dito. But he says, rather, all. So, Pakisabi po natin? All Christians are called to be ready with an answer. And we all make a case for Christianity in some fashion or method or another. But he asks, but are we doing it well? Diba? We make a case, we make a defense, we make an apology or a clearing for why we believe in Jesus to our friends, to the people that we work with, to our family. But the question is, are we doing it well? Okay? And so why is apologetics necessary? Why is it so important? Why is it so crucial for us? Well, number one, it is to strengthen the faith and knowledge of true believers. My dear friends, if you have come to know Christ, if you went to the big true life, the best weekend ever retreat, and you have surrendered your, your life to Christ, well, then I tell you, apologetics will strengthen that faith. It will give you some answers to fortify your conviction. Number two, it is sometimes necessary to use apologetics to lead non-believers to the gospel. Diba? If you've ever experienced evangelizing or sharing your faith with someone, Sometimes, lalo na pag piloso po po, <laughs> they will have many, what? Questions. And you use apologetics as a tool to be able to break barriers any of these people may have to lead non-believers to God and the gospel. And thirdly, it is to defend the faith against what? Attacks, heresies. Okay? There are false doctrines out there that you need to be firm in your grasp of the Christian faith so that you can fight against heresies. In fact, there is this one theologian, and this is nothing new, okay? Sabi ni Augustine, this is around 350 AD, this, this word, creed ut intelligas. What does that mean? It means believe that you may understand. According to Augustine, one of the early fathers of our church, okay, he says, that when you believe, it doesn't stop there. Diba? Nakarinig na, na po ba kayo ng, diba? Just believe, just believe. You're just quiet, just believe, diba? And God will give you the faith. No, no, no. According to Augustine, year 300 AD, quite near the time of Christ, 300 years apart, he says your belief, your faith, ought to lead you to understanding. That's the essence of apologetics, to understand more your faith. Another guy, 700 years later, said this, Anselm of Canterbury. He says, Fides Quarens Intellectum, which stands for faith. Our Christian faith is seeking understanding. The same thought. Yeah? Why do you believe in Jesus? Why do you believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Bible? Yeah? You ought to seek understanding. And this is where we have the crucial first point. When we're talking about truth, Ano po yung katotohanan? We must have a source. Okay? Do you agree with me? Do you, have a, do you have a source? And for us as Christians, our foundational guideline is none other than the Bible. Okay? The Bible, if you have it with you, sana po may Bible kayo, no? <laughs> the Bible is our primary and highest and final source of authority in all matters of faith and practice or conduct. How we live our lives. And this is what Christians have held as the highest authority, the arbiter for anything that we will ever face, whether in theology, doctrine, or whatsoever issue we will tackle in society. The verse that I want to share with you is 2 Timothy 3.16. Let's all read this together, shall we? All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for what? Teaching for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be what? Complete and equipped for every good work. We must understand that the Bible is for our good. The Bible allows for us to be taught, to be trained, to be equipped. And he says that we may be complete, or the word there is mature. Okay? We need to 
mature in our faith. And how do we do that? We study God's Word. And God's Word is inspired by Him. It is breathed out by Him. Okay? Tinan niyo po yung katabi niyo. Mukha bang, tanongin niyo nga, gusto mong bang maging mature? <laughs> oh, oh, di ba? Di ba? If we want to grow in our faith, we must understand the Bible. We must grow in it so that we would be equipped for every good work. Di ba? It's not just, you know, I surrender my life to God, to Christ, and then I'll just sit down and wait until I die to go to heaven. No, 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 no. The Bible is clear. God's word is provided so that we would grow into maturity, into completeness, so that we can do and be ready for every good work. Di ba? That's the Christian life. That's the Christian design. And the Christian life is lived based on truth. Okay? You will face many lies, many deceptions, many trends, many popular cultural references. But the word of God, the truth, stands the test of time. Let me repeat. God's word in the Bible is timeless. It has always been there ever since it was created and inspired by God through human authors. It is timeless. But until that time that it was written, up until now, it is always timely. Always. When you need advice, when you need wisdom, when you need guidance, what to decide, where to work, where to go, who to marry, who to court, who to get to know at Big Fridays. You need what? Ano po? The Word of God. The truth of God is always timeless and therefore it is timely. Now, how do we know what is true? The second book that I want to offer to you is written by Norman Geisler and the title is The Bible's Answers to 100 of Life's Biggest Questions. And in this book, I tell you, it's a very easy read. You have, you know, two pages, you know, for truth, for God, for Jesus, etc. If you can get your, your hands on this book, buy it, please. And he says, this is how you signify what is true. First of all, T stands for transcendent. Everyone say transcendent. Transcendent means that truth comes from God and that he reveals it to his creation. Okay? The truth didn't just pop out of the ground like that. And then my Bible, na. no, no. The truth comes from God. It is transcendent. Okay? It comes from a divine being, and he reveals it to us. Letter R stands for real. Everyone say real. Okay? Real means that truth always corresponds to the facts in the real world, meaning it's reality. You cannot just imagine this or conjure this up. Truth, by its essence, is real. It corresponds to reality. U stands for universal. Okay? It is true and applies to all people at all times, at all places. Diba? So you, you, you'll encounter people say, well, that's true for you and, 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 and not true for me. Well, the truth has to be universal, applicable to all. That's how we designate what truth is, particularly objective truth. Okay? And letter E stands for, it is exclusive. Okay? It means that truth is absolute. It cannot change. That is the nature of truth. It is unchangeable. Okay? So what we are understanding is truth, as Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? True is transcendent, real, universal, and exclusive. Yeah? Sometimes uh, some theologians will say truth is simply telling it like it is. Truth is what is. Yeah? Truth is objective. Okay? And we have to differentiate truth with preferences. Yeah? I prefer this over that. Yeah? Or beliefs. Well, I believe this over that. We have to differentiate truth with opinions. Your opinion may be that, my opinion may be this, but the truth is still the truth. Truth is the truth whether you like it or not. The truth is still the truth whether you believe it or not. And the truth is still the truth even if you feel strongly about it or not. Okay, example. How about, let's say, gravity. Right? Gravity. Who discovered gravity? No. 
ako hindi alam. <laughs> did you, did you, were you paying attention in, in, in high school? Yes! Okay, Newton dis discovered gravity, but did he create it? No, uh uh. Gravity is true anywhere in the world, it is real, and it is transcending. Diba? Gravity is always there, even in the known universe. Diba? God created gravity, and scientists like John Newton discovered it. Diba? Truth. What else? For truth to be real, it cannot contradict itself. Diba? Two opposing things cannot be both true at the same time and in the same manner. That's why one plus one equals two. Diba? One plus one cannot equate four. One plus one is equals to two. It's a ma universal mathematical rule. Okay? So these are just examples of how we differentiate truth from other lies or you know, opinions, preferences, or whatever people will believe. And many of these truth claims will show themselves in what we call belief systems. Okay? Or another, uh, another uh, way of putting it is worldviews. How people view or hold the truth. Sometimes these are called presuppositions. People have their supposed claims or beliefs about a certain subject. These are belief systems, worldviews, or presuppositions. Now, let me ask you guys. How many belief systems or worldviews are out there that you know of? <laughs> the first thing you have to notice about apologetics is that it uncovers so many of these worldviews. How people view the world. Let me just show you a classic diagram of a worldview or a belief system. Okay? Ayan. It's like a maze, no? <laughs> it's amazing. If you start there and you say God exists, you say yes, there, and then you ask more than one God exists, yes or no, you have the atheist, you have the agnostic, you have the humanist, the naturalist, the existentialist, the theist, the deist. Grabe, no? The discipline of apologetics will make us more familiar with how people view the world today. And for our time, at least for this first part of the message, I want to just briefly tackle a few of these worldviews with you. Okay lang po ba? Para lang, when you're talking to your, you know, to any of your friends, and they may have these questions, na ano ba talaga, where, where, or where are we coming from? Yeah? What is the reality about God, about truth? Diba? You have at least an idea of where people are coming from. And we can classify these from three classical worldviews, modern worldviews, and what we have today, postmodern worldviews. Let me start with the classical. First is theism. Everyone say theism. Okay? This idea believes in the existence of God or gods or divine essence. This is the classical belief. Right? Ancient people believe this, that there is a God or a divine essence somewhere out there. Now, there's monotheism, only one God. There is polytheism, there are more than one God. Okay? That's the Egyptian, Roman gods. Pantheism means God is in the world. Okay? There's no division between creator and the substance of his creation. Uh, particularly New Age today will say, you know, the universe will conspire to give you what you need and what you desire. That's an example of pantheism. God is in the world, in the universe. Okay? Panentheism means that all is in God. The divine pervades and interpenetrates every part of the universe and also extends beyond time and space. Some religions like mysticism, Buddhism, believe in this, that you have an aspect of God inside of you. You, know? you are God. Some people will claim that. You, know? you are let, small letter G, God. You know? That's panentheism. Those are classical views. And when we inspect the Word of God, it says clearly, diba? We've been going through the, the, the book of Romans in church, and Romans 1 verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, look at this, God's invisible attributes, His eternal power, His divine nature have been clearly seen. 
Okay? Kitang kita. And being understood through what has been made so that people are without excuse. Diba? When we just look at the known universe, we see that there is some creator God behind it. And he says further in verse 21, For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. But they became what? They became futile in their speculations, in their thoughts, and their foolish heart was darkened. Diba? So there, there arises this thought now, okay, well, if there's you know, a God there, then maybe there are many gods. Diba? Or if there are many gods, then possibly this God is inside of us or in the universe. Diba? So there you follow what the Bible is speaking of. God designed the universe to show himself, but people were futile in their thoughts. They were darkened. Diba? They were thinking all sorts of things with regards to God. And that is why we see another classical concept of deism. Okay? Deism is one God, divine being, but he is not personally involved in the universe. Okay? So theists believe that there is one God or multiple gods, or in the world or in us. Deism says, okay, there's God, pero I don't think he is involved in the universe. Okay? Deism, the idea is, I create a watch, the universe, and then I just leave it there. And then, bahala na kayo. Okay? That's deism. Okay? Now, there are pan-deism. God preceded the universe, created it, and then He is now equivalent with it. He's part of it. Okay? Polydeism, multiple gods exist. They created the world, and then they left the, the, the universe. They don't intervene. Okay? But some people will go beyond deism. They will look at animism. What is animism? Okay? These are very, you know, uh, apparent in um, developing countries. Okay? Uh, objects, places, creatures all possess a distinct spiritual essence and therefore they are divine. You, know? uh, you actually see people who uh, worship their pets, their cats and their dogs. You know, they're animists. Joke lang, joke lang, joke lang. Okay? Number four. Just to crack you up, parang medyo seryoso kayo ngayon eh. And then there's the non-theism, the absence of espoused belief in God's or divine essence. Well, people will just say, well, uh, I would rather not. I'll just be silent, indifferent, apathetic towards God and that whole divine essence being. Okay? And this is what resulted uh, as, you know, uh, as people progressed in their thinking. Again, Romans 1 says they are futile in their thinking. And that is why, as we continue in Romans 1, sabi dito, they professed to be wise, but they became fools. Diba? Thinking, okay, not theist, deism, animism, etc., etc. And look, they exchanged the glory of the incorruptible, immortal God for an image of corruptible man, birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. They created something other than God. Okay? And look at this, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creator rather, the creature rather than the creator who is blessed by God forever. Amen. Okay? So people just narrowly, you know, derail themselves. They go on to this path and then look at this, where we find ourselves in the modern world. This is about 17th century onwards. Atheism. The denial. Diba? Kanina, may, let's place some other things. Diba? Animals, diba? etc. In the place of God. But now, this is outright denial, rejection of the existence of God or divine essence. Other people will say, agnosticism. Yeah, they, they exist, but it's impossible to know. Okay? Some other people will say, nihilism. Denial of everything including meaning and purpose, even life. Sabi nila, there's no such thing as a God or a being, so life is meaningless. And furthermore, number four, existentialism. Individuals who are being self-conscious to transcend the absurdity of life, they say, there's no purpose, there's no meaning, everything is absurd. Okay? And that's why Psalm 14, verse 1 to 3 says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Diba? In the Bible, it already showcases atheists and agnostics, even before the concept arose. <laughs> he says, there's no God, they're corrupt, they've been 
committed abominable deeds, there's no one who does good. Wow. Apart from the truth of God, human beings are lost. Tama po ba? Diba? And look at this. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek after God. And what does he find? They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There's no one who does good, not even one. Paul later quotes this in Romans 3 to reiterate the point that left to ourselves, human beings will always worship something other than God. And so we are left to our postmodern world. Ito na yung panahon natin ngayon, okay? Yung atheism, agnosticism, di na uso yan. Okay? There are, there are so little, 5% of the population, but more people today are gravitating towards naturalism. What is this? The universe has a closed system of cause and effect governed by natural laws, scientific process. Everything is observable with results. If they don't turn to science, they will turn to humanism. Man is the measure of all things, emphasizing special values, dignity, and worth of humans. It's all about humanity. You know, let's do good. Let's be good for all. Okay? Nothing in inherently wrong about that. But if you take God out of the picture and you're all about humanity, mm, there's something wrong. And then you have probably the most trendy right now, relativism or pluralism, which says you reject all notions of absolute truth. There's no morality. There's no absolute truth. There's no right and wrong. It's all subjective to the meaning of each person. You do your own truth. You go ahead and do it. There is no absolute truth in the entire universe. And so, where are we left? Dr. Os Guinness once said this, where modernism was a manifesto of human self-confidence and self-congratulation. Postmodernism, our times right now, is a confession of modesty, if not despair. There is no truth, only truths. There are no principles, only preferences. There is no grand reason, only reasons. If postmodernism is correct, we cannot even aspire after truth, objectivity, universality, and reality. Diba? Contrast that to what Jesus said in John 8.32. Let's all read this together. And you will know the truth and what? The truth will set you free. But the truth about God sets us free. And later on in his great priestly prayer in John 17, he says this, Lord, sanctify them in the truth. And then your, your word is truth. Diba? So how do we combat all of these things that are bogging us down today? Well, we sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts. Diba? We make a defense, apologia, apologetics to everyone who asks us to everyone who inspects our Christian faith. So at this point, before I move on to the second part, let's pause and ponder. What are the worldviews or systems of belief or even presuppositions that have influenced me? Diba? Diba growing up, you were open to all of these in, in school or by your family. What are those that have influenced you? And how... Right now, do you approach truth? Do you see truth as just something subjective, kanya kanya? Or do you see truth as objective, based on the Word of God? Yeah? The answer to these questions will really tell whether you are seeking God on the path that He has provided or whether you are still believing some sort of world belief, worldview that is contrary to the Bible. Okay? So, good so far, guys. Okay lang ba kayo? Okay? That is truth in a nutshell. Okay? Now, it takes so long to study this, but I hope that it is clear for you. Truth is objective. It is absolute. It comes from the Word of God. That is our guide. Kasi kung wala po yung truth ng Panginoon, we will just make decisions based on a whim. Diba? Whatever, tell, whatever social media tells us, whatever our feed tells us, whatever anyone tells us, it goes, it flies, whatever. But the Word of God is there to guide us, to anchor us on the truth. So I can ask you, is your life based upon 
the truth of God's word. Diba? You will know by the way that you make decisions, by the way you conduct yourself, by the way you live your life, if you are adhering to the truth about God. There's this illustration that, uh, that people often use. Diba? And uh, they say that there are plenty of people, blind people, diba? and they're checking out an elephant. And the elephant is supposed to represent who God is or the religion. And then because they're blindfolded, uh, s- someone touches the tail and says, wow, an elephant is like rope. Another touches the trunk and says, wow, an elephant is like a snake. Another touches the ear, it's like a fan. Or the foot, a leg, it's like a trunk of a, of a tree. Or he touches the husk and he says, wow, it's like a spear. It's very sharp, it's very strong. Or the hide, it's like a brick wall. That's what people say all the religions or all the truths about God is. We're just all of us trying to make sense of what we feel. Well, number one, let me tell you, God has not left us to be blinded. The Bible says that God actually what? Opens the blind eyes. No matter what you say about the elephant, sabi mong snake or tree or spear, it is still what? An elephant. Truth is truth. Regardless of your observation, regardless of what you believe about it, truth is still truth, right? And God, through His Word, opens blind eyes so that we can see the truth for what it really is. Okay? So now that we've dissected what is truth, now, I'm gonna try in the next few minutes to talk about who God is. Okay? Now, this is probably more important than, you know, the, the truth, but the truth leads towards God. It is the exclusive domain of God that we be founded upon His truth. Now, there are many truths about God in the Christian faith. There's uh, theology, the doctrine of God. There's so much more. Christology, the doctrine about Christ, which you will tackle next week. Pneumatology, about the Holy Spirit. Bibliology, about the Bible. Soteriology, about how one is saved, salvation. There's also anthropology, the doctrine of men, man. Anthropos. There's many more. Ecclesiology, church, angelology, the study of angels and demons, and also eschatology, the study of the last things. There are many truths about God. But for today, we will tackle theology, the doctrine of God. What does it mean? What do we believe about God? Well, the Bible explicitly makes it clear that God In the Old Testament, Elohim, Yahweh, Adonai. In the New Testament, He is Theos, Curios. And God is explicitly called in the Bible the Supreme Being, the Omniscient, the Omnipresent, and the Omnipotent One. And in other parts of the Bible, He is called the Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Although the word Trinity does not appear in the Bible, it is certainly alluded to. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay? Thirdly, He is sovereign, immutable, unchangeable, the eternal one. What else? The creator, the originator, the sustainer of all things. Guys, and if this list does not, you know, just bring about worship, man, I don't know what will. Right? And number five, He is the self-existent one, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And furthermore, it says that He is the perfect God of truth, of love, of mercy, justice, and grace. All of this, guys, is from the Bible. And all of these attributes of God, how we view God, how we understand God, is actually useful for your life. Why? If you sense that there, everything in your life is crumbling apart. Your family is broken. Your relationship is falling apart. Well, God as the sovereign God will remind you that He is in control. Po ba? Amen po ba? That's how our theology now dictates how we view life. Whatever happens to you, you will know that God is in control. God permitted this. Whatever suffering I'm going through now, 
God is the sustainer of all things. If He can sustain the universe, why can He not sustain my life even in this trial? That's how we make sense of God. God is the first and the last. Doesn't matter if I'm in between. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm asking on God. I'm asking for my GB from God, but God is the Alpha and the Omega. He's already there in the beginning and He will be there at the end. So why worry? God is the Alpha and the Omega. He'll take care of you. Guys, alam niya na kung sino papakasalan niyo. God knows. Diba? You don't have to think, you know, worry and be fuss and pilit. Diba? That is who God is. It covers all parts of our lives. Especially that last point. He is the perfect God of truth, love, and mercy. Do you need truth, love, and mercy, and grace? Amen po ba? Oh, how about justice? Have, I, have you ever been done wrong? Diba? Have you ever been hurt? God, as the God of justice, will bring vengeance. God says, I will bring vengeance. I will repay. Diba? These, all of these things about God will play at some point or segment in our lives. That's why it's so important. Yeah? A.W. Tozer once said this, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So when you think about God, is He some you know, vengeful God? Is He some God who is impersonal na bala ka sa buhay mo? No, no, no. God is a loving Father. And He wants to reveal Himself to you to take care of you. Even if you feel like your life is spiraling out of control, God says, I'm in control. I'm over your life. I can see all things. I know all things. And I am present with you even in the pain. And therefore, as Christians, guys, if we believe in this God that the Bible speaks of, man, I tell you, we will walk with joy and with hope, with meaning and purpose. Not like the people who deny that there is no God. If you look at their lives, think that you no joy, no hope, no meaning. All of it is just for this life. There's no life to come. You know? That's why studying God is one of the most important pursuits that you could ever do. And that is what we're doing as we study and develop apologetics, you know? our knowledge and discipline of God. Now, as I wind down my time, another acronym that I find very useful from the same book, he says this about God, that for us to distinguish the God of the Bible from all other so-called gods, he says that God, letter G, has to be the source of all goodness. There are objective moral laws about what is good that are binding on all people and by which we must live. God is the dictator of right and wrong. It emanates from God's nature. Diba? Otherwise, my dear friends, paano natin malalaman kung ano yung tama at mali? Diba? Most people will say, well, it's just a product of our norms, of our culture, of our society. Well, to that I say, God's standard of right and wrong comes from Him. It is not dictated by society or culture. That is why we can say rape is rape. It's evil. That is why we can say murder is evil. Diba? That is why we can say that. Because God dictates goodness, morality. Another is, oh, the origin. The origin. Time, space, and matter all had a beginning point. Diba? If you think about the known universe, it all emanates from God. Okay? It just did not happen. It's as if I just throw this phone, diba? and all of its gadgets and parts and microchips, and then I just throw it on the floor, and then poof, it's a phone. It doesn't happen that way. Our universe is originated by God who designed it, time, space, and matter. And lastly, design, D. The complexity of the known universe requires a designer. Diba? You know, if you walk in a jungle and then all of a sudden you see a Lego house, a Lego mansion, you, 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 you won't say, wow, what a nice Lego house. 
it probably just came there and it built itself through time and erosion and all that. But when we talk about design, if the intricacy, the complexity of design is there, that means there has to be a designer, an architect. And one of some of the main arguments that uh, I, I don't think we have time for this today is some of the arguments that people make to prove the existence of God. And I want to go through this briefly just as we close our time. Some of these main arguments are ontological, meaning onto, meaning being. If we can think about God or goodness or beauty or even art or music, emotions of joy, anger, and delight, if we can conceive those in our minds, then probably these arguments will say there is a God. Did you ever wonder if you've thought about God and then he doesn't exist? How, did, how were you able to think about that? Right? Right? If you appreciate music or even art or a nice sunset, where does that come from? How can you say that this sunset is nice? While sitting by your uh, singles, pala. Okay. Diba? How, how, do you, how do you appreciate the beauty diba? of a face? If there is no God, it's all random. Diba? Have you ever thought about it? That's the ontological argument, the reality of being. Okay? Now, some people will say, well, yeah, well, human minds have great imagination. We can think of all sorts of things. Okay? No, I don't agree with that. Okay, fine. The teleological, the purpose or design, telos. It means that life on our earth in this universe is so complex that there needs to be a designer. There needs to be a great intellect behind it. All right? Now, I don't have time for this, but um, just the way that our earth is situated, okay? just our earth, it sits with an axis, if you know that from your science class. And it sits at an axis so that when it rotates, there are seasons. Summer. In the Philippines, summer. <laughs> All the time, right? But in other countries, there are seasons. Yeah? And there is just enough oxygen, 21%, 78% nitrogen, for us to have breathable air. Isn't that amazing? If you have any more oxygen, we will all combust into fire. If there was any less oxygen, just by a few percentage, we will all suffocate. Some people call this the fine-tuning of the universe, where it has to be in a narrow, Im almost impossible, almost improbable point for life to exist on Earth, so such that it's situated just near enough to the sun to give warmth and not far enough for us to freeze to death. Have you ever thought about that? That the earth is just perfectly in its distance so that there would be life in it. Huh? I find that an amazing and compelling argument, the teleological argument, that there is a great design behind all of this. Amen? Tingnan yung katabi nyo. Mukha bang, di ba, may, may nag-design dyan? Oh, bakit nyo tinatawanan? Okay. Now, the next argument is cosmological. Cosmos meaning arranged, orderly. Now, you will see this from the universe picture down to the very DNA that we have. That God is so amazing that there is information down to our DNA, our cells, that provide us that there is great intent. That this did not just come out of random happenings. The second law of thermodynamics, if I have it correctly, it says that the universe was caused by something. Okay? That the universe is expanding and eventually the universe will run out of energy. Okay? And what the cosmological argument says is that there is a cause to the cause to the cause to the cause of the entire universe. So if you track it down, what was the first cause? It is none other than God. The uncaused cause who caused all things. Yeah? That is God. Why? If there is no uncaused cause, if there is no God in the picture, what do you make of this universe? 
it just parang out of nowhere, like no time, no space, no matter, it bigla na lang, phew, big bang? I disagree. In fact, there are scientists, great scientists, physicists, molecular biologists who believe that there must be a God and that the, the evidence shows that it is in favor that God is existent. Meaning, mas mahira pa po mag-prove that there is no God. The universe itself shows us that there is order, there is an arrangement. And further, the axiological or moral argument, right and wrong, where did this come from? Did we just evolve out of apes and we created this code na mali yan, mali? No, no. God is the moral lawgiver who gave what is right and wrong through His law, through the scriptures. And, not, and more than that, even in our hearts. What do you call that? The conscience. You know? That's how you know what is right from wrong. You can tell. You know? God is the emanator of right and wrong. And finally, salvific. Salvific. This is one of the key arguments that we will have. Kunwari, kung, kung kausap mo yung friend mo, di ba? talagang piloso po, talagang ayaw maniwala, okay? Sabi niya, ayoko yung ontological, ayoko yung theological, ayoko yung cosmological, ayoko yung axiological, yung moral. Well, there is one more. The salvific argument whereby God saves. And this is where we get the main argument. In conclusion, taken together as a cumulative case that there is a God, He exists, he is the intelligent designer, the powerful cause of all creation. He is apart from time, but at work in time, and he is morally good. And on top of that, this is what he has done. The salvific reality. Okay? God has shown it in our conscience, right and wrong. Second, he has shown it in creation, in nature. The universe, the fine-tuning, the earth, the position, our DNA. God has spoken it long in His Word. Bago pa natin malaman yung microscope, bago pa natin malaman yung telescope. God has already spoken it in His Word. Cre creation reveals that there is a God. But thirdly, the most important would be Christ and the Scriptures. The plan of redemption. Bakit? You can prove that there's a conscience. There's right and wrong within the human heart, di ba? Sometimes it's seared, sometimes it's on point. You can prove that there is creation, the divine nature of God revealed through a sunset, through the mountains, through the seas and the skies and the universe. But apart from the salvific plan of redemption of God, it is useless. The salvific plan of God says this, that Hebrews 11.6, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because He comes... Anyone who comes to him must believe that he, let's all read this together, that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Diba? So with all of this evidence, the, the author of Hebrews is saying, it still takes what? Faith. And faith in who? In God. And that is why when we come to all of these arguments or even questions and discussions today, that all beliefs, all truths are somehow related or lead to God. This is their view. Okay? Pick and choose whatever you want. Whatever religion, whatever community, whatever institution. That man can reach his way up to God. But I tell you, dear friends, listen to me now. The only way for us to see the real evidence that God is salvific, that God has made a plan of redemption is not for us people, us humankind, to reach up to God. God's plan is different. He has the one who has reached down to us. Instead of us trying to reach for His grace, trying to reach heaven on our own merits, by our own belief systems, God is the one who came down 2,000 years ago and He showed Himself. He revealed Himself and God Himself took on flesh. 2,000 years ago. John 1 says that in the Word, the beginning, in the beginning, the Word 
was God and was with God and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. How can we prove that there is a God? 2,000 years ago, He came in the person of Jesus Christ. And that is how we see the heart of God revealed in the person of Jesus, who is both God and human, fully divine and fully human. And He is the only one who was born to die on the cross. And that is how we prove that God indeed is the creator, the originator of all things, the sustainer, and also the redeemer. That on the cross, He died. He paid for our penalty of sin, which is death. And He bled for you and for me. He was buried, but on the third day, He rose again. Bending, breaking the actual laws. Death to life. In the same way that He created the universe, something out of nothing from the corpse of Jesus that was buried in that tomb. On the third day, he rose again. His body started to beat, his heart. And then finally, he rose. He stood up and he walked out of the tomb. My dear friends, that is the only and one of the most, if not the most compelling evidences that God is real and that he cares for you. And that is why I close with this, 1 John 5, verse 20. Let's all read this together. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Whoever believes in Him they will have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. That is the evidence that God showcased for all humankind on the cross of Calvary. And that is how He showed and proved that He is indeed God over all. And today, now that I have presented to you the compelling evidence that God is real, God is existent, He is the cause of everything, May He be the cause of your life. Today, if He gave His life for you, will you not give your life to Him? Let's bow our heads and let's join our hearts. If today you have discovered the truth about God, more than anything that we've discussed here today, more than all of the scientific evidence, the philosophical arguments, but that the scripture has indeed proven that we have seen God through Christ. We have come to experience His love, His mercy, His grace. If today that's you, I want to compel you, I want to plead with you that you would surrender your life to Him that you would believe upon Him who died and rose again to prove who He was. That today, against any barrier, against any or, or any sort of opinion, preference, let the truth speak. That Christ Jesus gave His life for you. And if that's you today, I want to pray with you. Pray something like this with me. Heavenly Father, you are the almighty God, the creator, the sovereign one, the ruler of all things. Who am I that you are mindful of me? I'm just a speck in this universe. Who am I? that you have your thoughts towards me. What am I that you would even care for me? But Heavenly Father, I thank you that because you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth 2,000 years ago, 
to die and pay for my sins with his own life. Lord, I know my worth. My worth is in Christ and in Christ alone. Lord God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, would you come into my life right now? Would you renew my heart? Would you enlighten my darkened mind? Would you allow me to experience life and life to the full? Oh Lord, I surrender my life to you. Take control. Let the truth guide me and let your power sustain me. Thank you, Jesus. Today I live not for myself, but for you alone. That my life will bring glory and honor and praise to you. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. And we should also share that truth with others. That Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. That whoever believes in Jesus will never perish but will have eternal life. Let's all stand. Let's sing this song to our God. How deep the Father's love. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure. And that He should give His only Son to me, a wretched treasure. Oh uh-huh. 
praise you, God. May now all be seated. Big? Ano yun? What is P1G? Ano yung big? Bakit yung I? Big? What is P1G? Big is a movement. A community of singles. Guiding and building each other to know and to share the real purpose of life. To passionately seek, share, and serve God, maximizing our time, talents, efforts, and all that we are for Jesus. We are a community, guiding and praying for one another, praising God together. We are a movement. Moving to make Jesus known. Making singles see the real joy and satisfaction in Jesus. Living and reflecting a Christ-committed life. In behalf of the big ministry, we would like to invite you every Friday, 7.30 p.m., here at the Multipurpose Hall. I, together with the entire Big Fridays community, Welcome to Big Fridays! Be one with God. Hello singles, on July 22, Friday at 7.30 p.m., we are going to have a very interesting topic which is about the most important person in the world, Jesus Christ. He is the one figure in history who is most studied and yet most misunderstood, most imitated and yet most counterfeited, most revered and yet most maligned. His person alone has elicited a number of profound questions which we will try to answer in our session. How could this human being be God and man at the same time? Where in the Bible does Jesus say explicitly that he is God? And why is it important to believe that Jesus is God? Join us on July 22 as we tackle these and more questions on Jesus Christ and hopefully answer them satisfactorily. You can join us live at the Multipurpose Hall at CCF Center or online on YouTube or Facebook. Until then, stay safe and God bless. For those who are joining us online for the first time, we'll be flashing the first timer Zoom link for you to join in. And after that, our discussion questions will be flashed on our screen. Our discussion questions are flashed on our screen. Enjoy the breakouts, everyone. <laughs> 